Euthanizing the poor is just capitalism's true face. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. We're at the most dangerous point in humanity's abusive relationship with U.S. unipolar domination. For the same reason the most dangerous point in a battered wife's life is right when she tries to escape. The Empire is willing to do terrible and risky things to retain control. If I can't have you, no one can is a line that can be said to a wife or to the world. Nobody likes feeling like they're part of the problem. The reality that the U.S. is the most tyrannical, murderous, and belligerent government on Earth causes people discomfort for the same reason they don't like thinking about factory farming or their own socioeconomic privilege. Canada. We're euthanizing people now. Conservatives. Evil! Satan! Canada. Uh, poor people. Conservatives. We're listening. There's a tweet by an account named Wittgenstein. Canada, a St. Catherine's man, says he will choose medically assisted death over homelessness. City News explores the ethics of medical assisted dying amid concerns some feel they have no other choice. Euthanizing the poor is just capitalism finally being honest about itself. After all these years of falsely pretending to have real solutions to the, problem is, to the problems it creates, it finally presents a solution entirely in alignment with its values that actually works. Capitalism's answer to what about the poor has always been they should work harder, and its answer to what about those who can't work has always been they should die quickly. But until now, it's always been spoken wordlessly in the policies enacted and the societal structures put in place. Now it's just right there, completely undisguised. It's refreshingly honest. Why is AP continuing to protect the anonymity of the U.S. official who fed them a fake story about Russia attacking Poland? This is a very important question that demands serious answers. If government officials know they can get brazen lies anonymously published in the press and still have their anonymity protected after those lies are exposed, they will with 100% certainty continue to do so. Why wouldn't they? There are no consequences. It's obnoxious and unacceptable that the mass media currently hold random social media users to higher levels of accountability than powerful government officials who circulate lies that can start wars. Western politicians, pundits, and celebrities circulating the false claim that Iran sentenced 15,000 protesters to death is a good example of the way fact-checking and journalistic responsibility go out the window when it's a claim about a government the U.S. empire wants to remove. It's also a good illustration of the point Glenn Greenwald is always repeating, that the largest and most egregious purveyors of misinformation in the Western world are not Russian trolls or conspiracy theorists, but the mainstream Western political media class. Again, the most important thing for a Westerner to understand about Iran is that it's none of your fucking business. The less Western help Iranians are getting, the better it is for Iranians. Demands that you support the Iranian people are only ever made in bad faith. No material benefits come from you tweeting yay Iranian protesters with the relevant hashtags. All that happens is you draw more Western attention to Iran, along with the support for interventionism that inevitably comes with it. Advocating peace and criticizing Nazis to trigger the libs. It is good that the idea of peace talks with Russia is gaining more mainstream support. It should have had full support from the beginning. It's only due to propaganda that opposing endless escalations between nuclear superpowers isn't the most mainstream, normie position ever. Probably goes without saying, but anyone who believes Trump would be meaningfully better than Biden on any issue that matters didn't pay attention when he was president. Landlords don't provide housing. They restrict housing. The housing already exists. Landlords just make it harder for the people who need access to it. I'm not a multipolarist. I'm an omnipolarist. I think everyone on Earth should have an equal amount of power. I want 8 billion equal poles. 
Multipolarity is just the practical lesser evil to unipolarity, because it turns out unipolarity requires constant war and nuclear brinkmanship to maintain. People say multipolarity necessarily requires wars as well, but that's not true. There's no reason powers like China and the US can't get along and collaborate in everyone's interests. The only thing stopping that is the US empire's desire to keep chasing total unipolar planetary domination. I'm always reluctant to commit to other people's ists and isms, but I'm definitely big on omnipolarism and information anarchism.